No, I don't think I've ever done a really very good job of actually sharing what I really value. Um, so better late than never. I want to share something with you that uh, I consider to be the treasure of my heart, the the very thing that is most important to me. Um, in the Bible, we have four accounts of the life of Jesus, which uh, are known as the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark's a very fast-paced account, doesn't really include what we call the nativity, but uh, Luke and Matthew talk a lot about that, and we hear that in our nativity plays about the shepherds and angels and things like that, which is absolutely wonderful and very, very uh, deep and worth looking into. But John's Gospel account is really different. Uh, John's uh, account of how Christ came to the earth he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that's been made. And in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. Um, that establishes Jesus as somebody divine as the light of the world, a true hope in a collapsing world that to me feels like it's tumbling around down our ears, spiraling into catastrophe. And into this maelstrom, John offers this imagery of light, God's light splitting the darkness and of hope. It's like, what was his mission? Well, John tells us soon after, he says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the though the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So that's massive implications. Uh, I don't think people get Christianity. Um, I think people think it's like you're struggling up a mountain to God to try to be good enough. Um, out trying to get out of this wretched mess of a world trying to get to God it's the opposite of that it's a perfect pure holy God stepping down from this mountain that we can't climb anyway it's too high for us we'll die on the way um, he steps down lifts us up adopts us as his dear children uh, the Bible says you are no longer slaves to fear but you are sons it uses the word sons because that implies male or female. You get the same full inheritance that you would have had as a first century Jew. You you get everything that is the father's, just like your big brother Jesus. Um, the Bible says Jesus would be the firstborn amongst many brethren uh, in the book of Romans. So that's to anyone who will receive him. So that's worth unpacking, but in short... Uh, with blind Bartimaeus, I just say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. So David was an ancient king who was sort of a, a, almost like a prototype for Jesus in, in some ways, but Jesus is the, the true and better David. Um, and he, he, he is said to reign on David's throne in the future. He will come in power. He will come uh, with the angels to judge all of us living and dead. But what he has promised is that anyone who says, Lord Jesus, I'm crushed by my sin. I can't be a good person. I've tried. Like St. Paul says, there's nothing good living in me in my flesh. He says, I've tried to keep the law. I've got something in me that wants to do good. But when I try to do good, it's like the evil. But I don't want to do. I end up doing that. And um, which of us can't identify with that? So, I, you know, I pray to Jesus, I'm crushed. I can't be good enough. But, but I trust you to help me. And that's what the Bible calls repentance. It's turning from not only our sin and a disorder, and it's turning from self-reliance uh, to trust in Jesus. And this is antithetical to pretty much any other religion that I'm aware of. Um, because I'm not saying I'm getting to heaven by keeping rules. I'm also not saying that there's anything in the Bible that justifies me living in sin. I used to think that. That's called hypergrace. That's heresy. But Jesus will receive anyone who turns to him and he promises them life to be part of the family of God. And Jesus describes this as true, real and satisfying life that this broken world can't be. And I've experienced just a fraction of it. Like I'm probably the worst Christian ever. But I've tasted and I've seen and I can, I can just sense that greatness and the more I read 
the Bible, the more it's like it's being woven through me like a fabric that he loves me, he's for me, um, that he wants me to live this amazing adventure of a, of, of a life with him through his strength and that there's something new, some life that he gives that I can't simulate, you can't fake it. So Christianity, it's not about becoming good by our efforts, it's about the one person who was good enough stepping down into this world fully man, fully God, picking us up like we're lost sheep, like we're somebody who's just wandered off and we don't know where we are, we don't know what to do, picks us up, carries us to the Father, makes us a son, gives us every blessing of the household and it might cost us our lives, it might cost us our families, it might cost us everything. But what is that in the light of eternity? What is that in the light of having God himself live inside you and love you? So that's what Christmas means to me. Um, I really hope this has given you something to think about. Much love.